Good evening, Herman. trying to read. Uh, well, with all that noise, I can't concentrate on the jokes. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Don't I have any rights in this house? Oh, I just opened the window. Well, sorry, Grandpa, but you let out all our musty air. <laughs> well, fresh air affects my sinus. Sorry, my creaking old bones are bothering you. Oh, stop exaggerating. That's right. Go ahead, yell at me. I'm not yelling. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are! I am not! <laughs> oh, stop it, you two! You'll wake the dead again. That's all right, Lily. Go right ahead. Take his side. <laughs> But I know what's going on. <laughs> you just can't wait to see me in my grave. Oh, Grandpa, we've seen you there lots of times before. <laughs> You're acting very childish. I'm ashamed of you. Oh, so now you're ashamed of me. Well, you won't have to be ashamed of this poor, broken-down old man anymore. The next time you see me around this place, I won't be here. <laughs> now, Grandpa... I'm leaving this house for good. Oh, Grandpa... Tonight. Now, why did he have to do that? <laughs> Just a little warning, Pops. You brush up that corny magic act of yours or you'll be out in the street. Uh, yes, sir. I know I'm a little rusty, uh, but I I'm sure I'll be much better in the next show. Well, you better be. We don't want our customers to think we dug you up at the last minute. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you see, I'm adding a new trick to my act. <laughs> Here, let me show it to you. <laughs> now, you see, I take this ordinary vase of flowers <laughs> I make a few magic passes over it. It bursts in the flames and rockets shoot out. Now, I'll show you. <laughs> Abakazoo, Abakazam! <laughs> I know, you're skeptical. Abakazoo, Abakazam! <laughs> but just one minute. <laughs> Stupid late bloomers, the guy already left. <laughs> Herman, what are you doing here? I'm rescuing you. I don't need any rescuing. But Lily and I saw you. We thought you were suffocating. Herman, do me a favor. Get lost. I'm trying to do magic. <laughs> All right, if that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> Uh, he'd rather do it himself. <laughs> He's a phony. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an amazing display of strength. But now, let's check on the count. <laughs> that grandpa, what a ham. <laughs> Sioux City. Sioux City, Iowa. You know, Lily, I just can't seem to remember if I've ever been there. 
I try to remember. It's <laughs> a little too rare. Oh, well, try your other sword, Grandpa. Billy, I think we ought to give him a third degree some more on Sioux City. I think the old coot's trying to hide something. Now that's how to cook a sword. <laughs> Why? What do you mean she says she's my wife? That's what the woman in Sioux City said, Grandpa. She said you were her long-lost husband who cut out on her years ago, and now she wants you back. Rubbish. I don't have any wife in Sioux City. What about Philadelphia? No! Shreveport. <laughs> Lake Placid. San Bernardino. I don't know. You see? Yep. You see, Lily, I told you so. Uh, just leave him to me. I'll cross-examine his brains out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Herman. Now, Grandpa, what do you mean you don't know? Are you sure you don't have a wife in Sioux City? Well, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you know, after all, I've been married quite a few times, and a man 378 years old does have a tendency to outlive a wife or two. Where were you on the night of August the 12th? What does that have to do with it? Well, I don't know, but that kind of junk always seems to work on Perry Mason. <laughs> Imagine a woman pretending to be my wife. <laughs> Boy, some women will go to any lengths to snare a handsome rascal. <laughs> You've come back. Oh, my darling husband. Oh, it's been so long. Hey, well, let's can the mushy stuff, sister. <laughs> you know darn well I've never seen you before in my life. Now, calm down, sugar boy. Come in. You come right on in and let me pour you a nice glass of champagne. Thank you, but, but uh, uh, you see, we Draculas don't drink wine. <laughs> and now let's get this one fact straight. I am not your husband. Oh, darling. Don't you remember our wonderful marriage? I certainly do not. Don't you remember those romantic strolls we used to take hand in hand along the lake? No. And then we'd get into our yacht and take a little midnight cruise. Our yacht? <laughs> we'd go across the lake to have dinner at the country club. The country club? <laughs> and all those marvelous parties we used to have on our beautiful estate. Our 400-acre estate with our very own stable of horses. 52 horses. <laughs> and you, oh, you were so much fun. Fun in that ten thousand dollar Stutz bear cat I gave you. <laughs> ten thousand dollar Stutz bear. <laughs> no, darling, please tell me you remember our wonderful marriage. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, if you just keep on talking, I think it'll all come back to me. <laughs> hey, darling. <laughs> Herman, I'm terribly sorry for walking out on my family. Billy dear. Will you please tell this derelict creature who dares cross our doorstep to split? Come on, Herman. I have never seen that old geezer before. Herman, please take me back. Please. That's funny. I seem to hear voices from the past. No, Herman. How can you leave a poor old homeless man out here in the snow? What snow? <laughs> <laughs> it does look kind of cold out right there. Not only is it cold, it's very lonesome. Oh, good morning, Grandpa. Good morning. Good morning. Is it too late for a poor, broken-down old man to have some breakfast? <laughs> Not at all. I kept yours hot for you. Good. Oh, Grandpa, aren't you going to help Uncle Herman and Eddie fix the car? No, I'm not going to help Uncle Herman and Eddie fix the car. And if anybody asks me why I'm not going to help, I'll tell them why I'm not going to help. Uh, why aren't you going to help? I'm not going to help. 
because nobody asked me to help. This is the worst thing you've done since you bought us that mausoleum at the cemetery. And we couldn't move in because there were no kitchen privileges. How did I know it was a restricted community and they wouldn't take live people? <laughs> this is a nice mess you've got us into. What are we going to do without a car? Well, do you know Herman? No, I'm afraid not, Lily. Do you know Marilyn? No, I don't know. Do you, Grandpa? Oh! Oh! Well, Grandpa, why don't you give me the cold shoulder like the rest of my loyal family? Because I happen to have the solution to this whole dilemma. <laughs> Grandpa, you aren't going to try to talk me into shooting myself again, are you? No. I'm going to build us a car that I'm going to take to the drag races next Saturday and that I personally will win back our car from this lead foot bailer by beating him at his own game. <laughs> You're going to build a car? and race it at the drags? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous and preposterous idea I've heard in the last 150 years. <laughs> it's childish, idiotic, and utterly fantastic. <laughs> when can you start on it? First thing in the morning. <laughs> Drag, you look and wipe anything on the strip. <laughs> I ask you, is this an automobile or is this an automobile? <laughs> I really got to hand it to you, Grandpa. This is quite an attractive vehicle. Detroit could take a lesson from this design. <laughs> Those organ pipes are a very nice exhaust. Nice? I'll have you know, Herman, that this is the only dragster in America that could play Oh, Promise Me in second gear. <laughs> Call Sandy's father and tell him we'll really beat him at the drags tomorrow. Oh, goody, goody. Uh, uh, tell him we'll smear him. Duh. Hey, wait a minute, Eddie. Hold it, Herman. Herman, come here. Now, one of the first rules in racing is never tip your hand. What you do is you show up the day of the races, get your rival to commit himself on the bet, then you unveil the winning car. But is that good, clean sportsmanship? Of course it is. As Sonny Liston says, it's not playing the game, it's winning that counts. <laughs> oh, he won! Oh, he won! He won! Oh, oh, oh. Now for the parachute. You saved my life. Well, of course, Grandpa. What else could I do? I have to have this box back at the parlor first thing Monday morning. Are you ready? Herman. I'm coming, dear. I'm coming. Now, do you have the potato salad? Yes, dear. Do you have the pickles? Yes, dear. Are we going someplace? Yes, Grandpa. It's such a nice day. Herman and I are going to the beach. You're not taking me? Grandpa, you know you never enjoy the beach. 
All you ever do when you get there is bury yourself in the sand. <laughs> Coming there? Bye, Grandpa. All right, all right. I'll stay home and play checkers with Marilyn and Eddie. <laughs> Eddie! Eddie? I'm right here, Grandpa. Eddie, how about you going to find Marilyn, and then the three of us will have a checker tournament. Oh, Marilyn went out with her new boyfriend. And I have to go play with one of the neighbor kids. Which one? I don't know. I haven't caught him yet. <laughs> That's it. Go ahead. Go to the beach. Go to your boyfriends. Go to your girlfriends. <laughs> Leave the old man alone. Who needs a lonely, sick old grandfather? Hey, wait a minute. Igor, Igor, how about you and I having a game of checkers, huh? <laughs> oh, you got a date, too. <laughs> no, Igor, you got no heart. You're nothing but a rat with wings. <laughs> oh, boy, when is anybody around here gonna pay any attention to a poor old man? <laughs> What's this? Are you lonely? Do you seek affection, companionship, and matrimony in the sunset years? <laughs> Why, that's positively spooky. <laughs> Let the Kindred Spirits Matrimonial Agency make your September song a duet. Hmm. A wife. Why not? It sure beats burying yourself in the sand. <laughs> She's not quite as pretty as Grandma. Well, what can you expect? A woman like your grandmother only comes along once in a lifetime. Every 300 years. Let me see the letter. <laughs> Her name is Lydia Gardner. She was quite impressed with my picture. Prepare to be impressed. Wow! <laughs> Lydia, my darling. At last, did I frighten you? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, yes, you did. Good. I see you've been getting acquainted with the girls. But that isn't who you came to meet, is it? What do you think? I think you're magnificent. And I must tell you, I never did believe in long engagements. <laughs> we were hoping you'd come and stay with us for a while so that you and Grandfather could get acquainted. Oh, that's a splendid idea. But of course, I'd have to get my things. Of course, my darling. But first, let me show you around the house. Lily, stop fussing, will you? What are you so grumpy about? I just want the house to look nice. It's all this paperwork Lydia brought with her. Insurance, last will and testament. I tell you, getting married is not what it used to be. I thought all you had to do was take a blood test. And I was kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> well, that's that. But Lydia's a darling. She's worth all the red tape. We'll be as sweet and cozy as two little bats in a cave. I'm sure you will. Hello, dear. Grandpa. Well, back from the salt mines again. Mmm. <laughs> Fresh weeds. Do we have company? Hardly. More like a close relative, uh, wouldn't you say, Lily? Yes. Grandpa's intended is in the kitchen. I want you to meet her, Herman. His mail order bride is in this house. I'm disgusted. Dum, bum, ba -dum. And I want no part of it. If I was ever to lower myself to meet that woman, I could never face myself again. Herman, she's going to be. How could you do this to me, Lily? And how could you do this to the memory of grandmother? I am never going to meet that woman, and I'm putting my foot down right now. <laughs> Oh, darn. Excuse me. 